Islam, former chairperson of the Atomic Energy Commission. Thank you very much for, for being with us, Dr. Islam. Thank you very much. And, uh, Dr. Islam, can uh, you hear me? Inviting. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, I hear you. Um, Dr. Islam, would you please, I'd like to have your vision regarding uh, the most important points which were tackled in uh, the speech of President Abdel Fattah Sisi in this important summit. Actually, it was a very important speech, actually, concerning the climate change. As you know, uh, Egypt was chairing the Climate COP uh, 27 uh, last year. And uh, it, this conference is very important because it is uh, for the major economic forum of energy and climate. And uh, President Sisi addressed uh, many topics, actually, uh, and he uh, attended this video conference uh, also last year in, uh, in Glasgow. And, uh, and uh, it, it, uh, it is very important that uh, in Sham Sheikh uh, there was an implementation plan aiming at achieving the required balance between rising ambition and achieving implementation uh, while uh, demanding the adoption of uh, concrete means and uh, especially proportion uh, of renewable energy and accelerating the plan of reducing methane emissions. Sure. And uh, it was yeah. addressing the availability of the means of implementation, actually uh, the financing and uh, some sort of uh, to uh, uh, secure the financing and uh, the uh, asking uh, the uh, developed countries to uh, consider their uh, commitment to the uh, uh, developing, developing countries for uh, tackling their uh, contribution to the, uh, the to, to the to this effect. Actually, it was a very important issue that in uh, COP. Uh, 27, there was a decision uh, for the first time to achieve the uh, desired progress before the next summit, uh, summit, including the establishment and financing funds for losses and damages. And this is a very yes. important step. I think loss and damage was uh, the, one of the most important uh, results yeah. of COP27. That, you mentioned many true. important points, Dr. Islam, but let me start with the securing financing because uh, investing in the field of renewable energy is a little bit new or brand new, relatively at least, uh, particularly in our area, in the Middle East and in Africa. To what extent uh, do, you, do you think that now the atmosphere is paved or the environment is paved uh, and is ready for investors to invade this new market and to invest in renewable energy. That's true. Uh, Egypt is embarking in a am very ambitious plan to increase the percentage of uh, renewables in the total uh, energy uh, mix. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a very important step that we uh, renewable energy are really uh, clean energy. Yes. I am talking about uh, solar energy, about uh, wind energy, I'm talking about hydro energy also. This has uh, the potential of having a great contribution of these, uh, of these sources. Yeah. And uh, it is working very hard and the ambition and by 2030, it will... Uh, 2030, have, yes. Well, mm. Yeah, yeah, 20, no, 2030, but... Uh, uh, 2030, yes. it will have more than 40% maybe on the, uh, from, the, from renewable. Yes. Um, also, you mentioned the commitment of the developed countries to meet the needs of the developing countries. It's all for the sake of humanity. I think now 
uh, the developed countries learned the lesson the hard way with all the um, the um, natural catastrophes which took place with the um, with the uh, disasters like uh, the floods, the fires, the yes, uh, earthquakes, the typhoons, turn, you name it. Um, to what extent do you think that it's now a must, not a luxury anymore, that uh, these commitments are going to be implemented on the ground and there is no room for escaping these commitments? Unfortunately, they, they learned the lesson the very hard way. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe if you look at the disasters which happened in 2022 in France of drought and, 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 mm -hmm. it is a uh, uh, very real case. And uh, the real problem is that some of these changes which happened uh, due to uh, unwise uh, behavior of the countries that there is, uh, some, some of these effects cannot be reversed, even if you have uh, zero percent emission right now, uh, it will, uh, some of these effects will last for centuries yes. before it can be reversed. Yep. And uh, it is, uh, I believe that there is no luxury now mm -hmm. of uh, helping and uh, uh, have an international uh, cooperation, which actually President Sisi mentioned it, and President, uh, the importance of international cooperation and to have this real commitment. To add or to echo uh, uh, what you have said, sir, Egypt is really a pioneer and is playing a pivotal role. Since we are still assuming the presidency of the COP27, uh, we are all the time in cooperation with the UAE or the United Arab Emirates as the COP28 is going to be held uh, there, inshallah, in few months from now, to be accurate. But um, this continuation of effort, of joint efforts exerted, um, I think um, they are sending messages to the whole world. We should continue on what we have built. It's not only the conference, it's not only the results, it's not ink on paper, it's deals which should be implemented on the ground and joint action which should also uh, take place uh, throughout the year. How do you see this, sir? I see it in a very, uh, in, in two ways. Mm. Some of the scientists are really pessimistic and some are optimistic. Let us say uh, uh, we, we should uh, have the approach realistic. Realistically speaking, that uh, the commitment of when you see the scenarios of the risk and the scenarios of the damage which will happen and the disasters in the world. Uh, they have also the, some uh, scenarios assume that the countries or the various countries will obey their commitment towards what they have committed themselves to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, some of us are you that no action will happen. The no action alternative that we don't do anything, is catastrophic. Uh, is, there's no, uh, no way of thinking. And we have only eight years till two, uh, 2030 to achieve this um, real reduction, drastic reduction of emissions so as to, obey, to, to have a real, uh, we will not reverse the effect, but we will not, will not reach the uh, very bad scenario of having four degrees something uh, yeah. uh, increase in temperature with the flooding. 1.5 is still um, uh, too much, but it's our 1. hope. 1.5 is, is too much. <laughs> yes. It, 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 uh, it's a ceiling uh, in eight years. I don't, I don't know if we, we can do it, but we have to strengthen this. Uh, and to put the developed countries in their responsibilities that uh, they have to help the world uh, and uh, because actually Africa and the developed uh, countries, Africa is one of the least uh, continents which have the contribution of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Emission. But we are unfortunately um we are unfortunately paying the dear price. Sir, one final question regarding green hydrogen, because green hydrogen, I think it's the future. 
Um, yes. Uh, how do you see Egypt uh, as, um, as should be, if I may say so, a regional hub for renewable energy and particularly for green hydrogen? Yes. Uh, both are uh, so much related, actually. Mm -hmm. Green uh, hydrogen, when you call really green hydrogen, you have to have the source of electricity which to produce hydrogen should be uh, renewable, uh, environmentally friendly. And, but you don't have to uh, burn fossil uh, fuel and take electricity and generate hydrogen and say it is green. No, it is not green. Uh, so Egypt, uh, from its situation in the, um, in the sun belt, that they have a lot of sun and a lot of wind, they can uh, produce uh, renewable energy in a, a, an economic way. So it is, uh, Egypt can be a hub for green hydrogen and can uh, support the uh, ship by uh, burning clean uh, fuel, which has no, it has a real zero emission of, uh, uh, of greenhouse gas. So it is, Egypt can be a real hub due to its situation, it has uh, on the Red Sea and, and the Mediterranean Sea, they have a real facility to uh, supply the ships with their needs and to export uh, green hydrogen to uh, cope with the uh, energy crisis, which we know that it is uh, too valuable to burn fossil energy. It is renewable anyhow, it is uh, unrenewable. Well, uh, yes, yes, we were very much delighted to have uh, with us uh, Professor Dr. Ali Islam, former chairperson of the Atomic Energy Commission. Thank you very much for your input, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right after the short break, we are going to turn back with more, so stay tuned.